Welcome to another episode of Learn Brizzy Page Building, and this is JP. Today we will be looking at another block and deconstructing it, in particular a block that features the icon element. I've already opened the page here of the Brizzy Page Builder, and we are going to choose the block that we will be working with today under the dark, and then I have chosen this one here the best features in our modern software. You have, if we quickly look at it, we've got text here, which is a heading, then two paragraphs here, and we've got four columns with an icon and text. These two are separate elements, and we also have two spacers over here. So let's go ahead and recreate this block, and the first thing we need to do is add a new block, and choose Add a Blank Block. Uh, yep, and Brizzy gives us this uh, template that contains a row and two columns inside the row, which I like to delete and start afresh. First thing I'm going to do is match the color of our block to the color of this block. And if you go up here, click on the icon, and you want to know what color it is, you have to go to colors and not background. Even though it's a background color, you have to go to colors and you can copy the code there, but it is this first color that you see here, charcoal color. I really like this one. Let's apply that to our block. Colors. Choose the color. There we got two matching color blocks. The next thing I want to check before I continue is what kind of sizing did they use on this block. Again, click on the icon, go to settings, and then you will see the width is boxed at 85%. So we have to apply that 85% also to this one here at the bottom. Click on it, settings, it's boxed, and bring it down to 85%. If you cannot get it to that five, I want to show you a short trick for this one. If you click on it and you type for some reason in this one, Typing is not going to work. It works in all the other sliders, so this is just a small glitch that the Brizzy team can still fix for us. But there is a third alternative, and that is that you use your up and down arrow keys on your keyboard. Let me do that. I'm going to drag the slider up to 100%, and then I'm going to use the down key on my keyboard up to 85. And while I'm doing this, nothing is going to happen. It's until I get to 85 and I let go, it's going to jump. You saw that slider jump. Let me show you again. Drag it to 100%. I'm going to tap down on the down arrow key. Nothing happens to the slider. You see it remains there until I get to 85 and let go, and boom, it jumps. It takes about half a second to register. Right, so let's bring in our first element, which is this text up here. Grab the text here from Add Elements and drag it in there. And here we see the text now. First thing we're going to do is we're going to apply the typography. Currently it's set at paragraph. If we look at the one at the top, it is set at heading one. Interestingly enough, if you look under settings, the HTML tag is also H1. I'm not entirely sure if I will use H1. Um, this would have been an H2 for me. H1 is usually your page's title, but we are recreating the block, so we're going to stick to H1. This will be your decision to make. My advice, in this case, I would probably have gone for a H2. So let's go back to our block, click on it. You don't need to select any text. You go to the T, which is Topography, and you change here your paragraph to Heading 1. Also, what I want you to notice is that currently the paragraph is set at Noto Serif. If you click and go to Heading 1, it's going to jump to Montserrat. And this is styling that is predetermined. We will look at that at another time. And of course, it is aligned and it's white. So let's go to the next one that is Colors and make it white. And then Alignment, click once. And then over Settings, we are going to choose H1 for the HTML tag to copy and be the same like the one at the top. For the text, I'm just going to Control-A and then Control-C for copy 
and then come down here, control A and control V for paste. Of course, you can see that these two are still not identical. That means at the top text, they have applied some padding. So to view the padding, you click again on the text anywhere and then click on settings and click on more settings. And then here on this side, you will see under styling, you will see padding. The right and the left both have a pixel padding of 180 pixels. So let's do the same for our text in our block. Click on it, go to settings, more settings, and then here padding. You see there's only one slider because you have to choose here, link or unlink. So we are going to unlink it. And then for the right padding, we're going to drag the slider up, 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 and it only goes to 100. We need 180 and you get 180 by clicking in the box and then typing 180. And there you go. Let's do the same for the left. I just have to click on it and type in 180. And somewhere I had, yes, there we go. Right, we have identical. That's great. The next one on the list is this spacer. Let's have a look, click on the spacer, click on the settings and we see it is at 20 pixels. So we're going to add elements, grab the spacer over here and drag it under our title. Click in the spacer, go to settings and I'm going to type in 20 pixels and it will give us that. Next is these four columns and inside every column is an icon and a text. So we need to first create some columns. We do that by going here to our add elements and grab columns and drag it under the spacer. Remember what you are seeing here is the spacer element. We want to drag it to the line below until it is dark gray and let go. If you've worked with Elementor, columns will be exactly the same experience for you. We are going to duplicate the column so that we have four. And you click on this and then you go to duplicate. And again, just duplicate and you have these four columns. Right. The first thing we are going to do in this column then is drag in an icon. Go to add elements, grab your icon and drag it in. And uh, it may take some time to load. Now, Unlike the text, let's look at this title here. If I click anywhere in this text frame here, where am I now? Uh, it didn't do it. So this is also a good example. This is exactly what I wanted to show with the icon. I didn't expect the text box to do it as well. Look at this empty space here. You see the frame. When you click on this empty space, nothing happens. But when you click on the text, your toolbar pops up. And it's the same with the icon. If I see the frame of the icon, but I click in any of the empty space, nothing will happen. You have to click on the icon itself and the toolbar will pop up. Just remember that because at the beginning, when I work with icons, I thought something is wrong. I kept clicking and it, it didn't want to open. I thought there's a bug. And it took me some time to realize if you want to activate the toolbar, you always have to click on the content and not the space. So let's look at the icon settings up here. We click on it and we click on this little one that says icon. Now, what happens here is something that you don't want. You are going to make changes to this icon, but the whole dialogue, pop-up dialogue is over the icon. How can you see what's going on, right? You can change the size and look at that. You have no idea what's going on. And the reason this is happening in Brizzy is that you are too close to your top. So the only way to avoid this, let's click out, is you have to scroll down. You have to give the dialog box some more space. If I click on it now, you will see it pops up at the top. And now I have a clear view of my icon. So just remember, if you are too close to your top margin, it is going to force the dialog box over your image and your content. Now I know 
the previous one was 56 pixels. And this is where we adjust the size of the icon over here. Over here, we choose which icons we want to enter. So it's 56 and it's blue. So let's go down here. It's already blue. We can confirm that over there. Click on the icon box and we don't see the presets for 56. So we click on our little dot 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 and increase this to 56. And let's change the icon and we do it over here. I'm just going to choose a random icon, anything. Take some time to load. Come, come on, load, load. There we go. Right. And that's it. Then the next thing is a text. So we're going to go to add elements, grab the text and drag it under until we see that thick gray line and let go. Let's type in image already. I'm going to type in caps and I'm going to center it. And this is probably a button topography. Let's check. Right. Let me just show you again what I did. I clicked on the text, click on the T for topography. And then here we check it's set on button. So I'm going to go down to my block, click on the text, click on the T for topography, and then scroll down to button. We have exactly the same. And I'm just going to change the color to blue. Just for interest sake, if you click on the image, you will see there's more space in the frame up here. And there is almost no space under the icon. And that is all to do with a few changes. So for the icon, let's click on the icon. Let's go to settings. And you will see here under the margin, the bottom margin is at zero. So we're going to do that to ours as well, just to make sure that we are compliant. And I'm going to type in zero for the bottom margin. But then strangely enough, I removed 10. But then what they've done is they've added 10 to the text. So if you click on the text and you go to settings, you will notice gap above. They have added 10 pixels to the gap. So just look at what happens when I do that. I do like the gap above and the gap below. It's a quick way of messing around with the margins. So we have to add 10 pixels to the gap above to our text. So we go to image, click on it, go to settings, gap above and go up to 10. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. There we go. Good. And that's it. That's all you need to do. And you've got your icon with a description under it. And now we are going to duplicate that. And that's what you will do in other page builders like Elementor as well. First, you delete these guys. And then you go ahead and you duplicate this column. Duplicate. And again, Ah, you can just click on it again and you've got the four. I am not going to spend time on changing all the icons. You can do that to your heart's delight. There are 4,000 icons for you to use in Brizzy. That is huge. And I just said I'm not going to change them all. And here I am changing them. Let's just mix them up a little bit. Click on the icon. And of course, you can use categories up here. Let's have a look. Travel. Let's choose travel. And what is this? Okay. And we add the what is this? Right. And it takes some time to load. And there we go. Maybe it's a lighthouse. Boy, something like that. Just the only thing I want you to remember about the icon is that when you see the frame and you click in the frame, your toolbar is not going to show up. You need to click on the icon and then it will show up. Right. So we have replicated those parts and then we get to a, a very, very tiny, thin little spacer over there. Let's click on it. Click on settings and we see it's 10 pixels. Let's do that. I'm going to go to this spacer over here. I'm going to click on duplicate and then I'm going to click in it, hold and drag until I see the thick gray line. Let go. Click on it. Click settings and type in 10 pixels. Good. And then to round off our block, we are going to add columns. And we do that by going to add elements. Click on our columns and drag it in until you see the thick gray line. Let go. And then we are going to add a text, 
element to each column. Grab the text, in you go. Grab another text, in you go. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this text, Control A, Control C, come down here, Control A, Control V. Inline editing has never been so good, really. This is like working in a word processor. Same for this one. Click on it, Control A for select all, Control C, copy, come down here, click on it, Control A, Control V for paste. But one thing you have to notice is that if we go to this column, you will see that there is a space between the frame, that line there, and the margin of the column. And we don't have that here. That is definitely something to do with the column. So let's go look at what they did. Click here, go to settings, more settings. And you will notice that here on the right, we have a padding of 30. Now you will say, wait, there's 5, 30, 5, and 15. But any column that you drag in, if we go down to our column, any column by default is going to have a padding of 5, 15, 5, 15. This is their default padding that Brizzy brings their columns in. So going back to the top, you're going to see that the padding is 5, 30. 5, 10. And let's apply that to this one. Settings, more settings, and the right padding, we're going to type in 30. And then on the left, you also see that space over there. Let's see what they've done here. They've probably just did the opposite. And 5, 5, 5, 40. Wow, this one is very different. You can see that they've squashed it all the way. To the edge here on the right. Very interesting. 55540. And we're going to apply the same here. This is how you learn. You know, why, why, why? There's the 5. We add a 5 in here. We really force it all the way to the right. And then this one, we're going to put on 40. Good. We've got identical blocks. Excellent. Now, in, in this video, we worked with the icon. And in the next video, we're going to work with what is called the icon box. You will find it over here called icon box. This is actually a pro element in my opinion, but I'm going to show you then in the next video, this awesome element that exists within the free version of Brizzy called the icon box and a very interesting element to work with. Hope you enjoyed the video.